morning, everybody, and welcome to Law and Crime. I'm Jesse Weber, and thanks for joining us here on the program where we cover the most interesting live trials and legal stories in the news today. We have a lot to talk about today. Shocker, but really we do, so let's get started right now. Okay, so that was some of the hearing about whether or not the public is going to see this tape uh, beforehand, and we all know that the judge put a temporary hold on that. But I want to break down the complexities of this case, and joining me is trial, is, excuse me, is trial attorney Kelly Hyman, as well as forensic death investigator from, foren from Jacksonville State. State University, Joseph Scott Morgan. Good morning to you both. It's great to have you both. What a case to talk about. Uh, Kelly, I want to start with you. First, let's just go back to what this hearing today is all about, whether or not this video is either going to be allowed in trial. I want to go back to the idea of, does the public have a right to see this video? I mean, what do you make of, yes, I know Florida has these public records laws, but really, what is the right for the media and the public to see Robert Kraft, or allegedly Robert Kraft, engaging in sex acts. Right. Good morning. It's nice to be here. Well, the public has a right to know. It's where you have to balance between whether the public has a right to know and whether it's going to be an invasion of someone's privacy. So because it's a public interest and he's such a high-profile person, there's a lot of interest by the media to have the tape. And in Florida, with the Sunshine Laws, people have a right to know. So it's an interesting balance, and ultimately we'll have to see what the court decides, whether it's going to be released to the public at large, ultimately, or it's going to be sealed, and so no one will see it. Now, okay, let me ask you this, Kelly. Uh, one, one more follow-up question about that today is about whether or not it be allowed into evidence. The idea that this investigation was kind of strange, that they got this sneak and peek warrant uh, on the basis of a fake bomb scare to get those cameras installed, this is legal, right? They could do this. They could have false pretenses in order to get those cameras in there. And they didn't originally arrest Kraft when he was leaving that spa. He actually went back the next day, according to them. So is there something that you feel is a little off? Well, you know, it's, and someone argued that it's um, a violation of your Fourth Amendment right. And that would be an illegal, illegal search and seizure for them to do this. And so it's a really interesting argument from that standpoint. And the fact that they didn't have the right pretense to do it is, is very, you know, questionable. Um, so, you know, I'll have to kind of see what happens when it comes to that. But, yeah, it's, it's under those false pretenses is, is not the best uh, situation. So, you know, there's an argument that actually, you know, it's Ill illegal for yeah. them to, to have this. And ultimately, the judge will determine whether the tape is admitted into evidence or not. Sure. It's a big decision, and it's pro it's the whole prosecution's main case. All right, Kelly, I got to ask you, if she planned on doing nothing, why did she go to trial? You know, that's an interesting question, Jesse. Um, you know, I, I don't know the answer to that question of, of why she did. Ultimately, you know, the jury's going to make a determination whether they feel that it's the death penalty. They have three options, whether to give her life with parole, life without parole, or the death penalty. Um, the fact that she put on no evidence or anything at all is, is surprising. Um, she's not giving anything for them to, to assist herself, um, which is, you know, an argument for appeal, that she didn't properly, you know, represent herself. Well, so we're ultimately going to see what the jury decides today. Obviously, it's a risk. I mean, it's a gamble. She, if she were to just plead guilty, the, you know, the, the, they would probably you know, not even give her the option of life. Uh, maybe she wanted to risk it. Who knows what a jury might do? Stranger things have happened. She said she wanted to put it in God's, hand, God's hands. The other way of looking at it is it's a waste of taxpayer money by not putting on any kind of defense. Good. Kelly, I want to ask you this. It seems like, from the prosecution's point of view, a pretty slam-dunk case. You know, no objections from the defense. They didn't have any witnesses to worry about on part of the defense. She didn't put up any fight. They didn't put up any fight in the, uh, you know, the penalty phase. But is it so easy? Is it so straightforward or not really? I mean, what is it like going up against the defendant who's representing herself and not doing anything? Right. You know, that's, that's very, you know, tough um, because you have to be mindful of the fact that, you know, she might appeal this decision. So you have to be careful on how you present it. But then also the, the argument could be, okay, well, if it's, if it's torture for that level, does that, was it neglect? Or was that because she starved her physical torture? Now, there was also discussions about her physically abusing her, um, but ultimately the jur jury will make the determination of whether that was torture, in fact, 
for her to um, have the death penalty. And if it, they do say that it's the death penalty, she would be the third woman in the state of Georgia um, that would uh, go through the death penalty. Wow, that would be something, I'll tell you that. Um, we might get an answer today. Who knows? We're keeping a careful eye on the courtroom feed. Wow, just again, a brutal way that you're hearing what this young girl went through. Uh, Kelly, my question to you, though, is, you know, this is really disturbing to listen to. And if there was any case prime for the death penalty imposition, it would seem like this case. But is what is the jury ultimately grappling with? It's not a simple decision in any case, is it? No, absolutely. To know that you're going to put someone to death is a very hard decision. But um, the jurors were asked whether they could impose the death penalty, and all of them said that they could. So they ultimately have to decide, you know, was this act, starving this girl and this abuse um, fact where the woman should be um, uh, killed for it. The question, though, of course, is if they're even looking at her and she's not saying anything to them, they're still looking at her, you're a human being, I'm looking at you every day, and that affects their decision, right? Absolutely, as you know, as a human being, and maybe the fact that she hasn't put anything on, that she's getting empathy from, from the juror. Like, why, why isn't this woman you know, bringing a defense? She said, you know, it's, it's, it's God's will, but why isn't she you know, advocating for herself? She didn't mm -hmm. have any opening statement she didn't ask any questions. Um, she had an attorney, and they offered her, um, you know, uh, life in prison, and she fired the attorney um, and decided to go with the case on her own. And basically, no defense did not put on any mitigating circumstances or anything. And the jury must be wondering, why is this woman doing this? Uh, yeah, I think we're all wondering that. We thought it might be some strategy. We thought at least she was going to cross-examine. Her husband didn't happen. She was just withering away, this poor 10-year-old girl in her room. It's absolutely horrible. Um, but Kelly, let's just go back to a second. So she was found guilty. We weren't surprised about that. We're waiting to see what happens, what the ju jury ultimately recommends for her sentence. We discussed the idea of an appeal, though. But correct me if I'm wrong. What could she appeal? Because she hasn't put up on a fight. Remember, every time she doesn't object to something happening in that courtroom to preserve it for the record, what are her grounds for an appeal? Well, absolutely, one of the grounds could be that um, she wasn't fit to stand trial. Um, you know that, and that. Even if she's that, answering all the questions, she knows what's happening. She completely gets it. She's still not fit. She can make, you know, she can make that argument. It doesn't mean that the appeals court is going to um, ultimately change the determination of what the court decides, but absolutely she can, you know, make that argument. Or that she wasn't adequately informed, but the judge is doing everything he can to adequately in inform her. You have the opportunity to bring mitigating. You have the opportunity to make some statements. He's putting that on the record. So if it does go to an appeal, that he's laid that groundwork of saying, we've given her every opportunity, saying that she can make a statement, she can bring mitigating circumstances, she can bring family members up and, and talk to the jury. Um, and she said no. Nope, she said no. And we're watching her throughout this trial. Kelly, let me ask you this. It seems like such a strong case. How would you have defended this if you were representing Tiffany Moss and she allowed you to defend her? Would you put the blame on Iman Moss? I mean, would you say that you didn't know, that the mother, your client didn't know that this girl was starving to death? I mean, what would, what would be a, an argument against this? Well, an argument against you know, the death penalty would be some kind of mitigating circumstances. I mean, she had you know other two children that you know seemed fine and everything was you know okay. That um, you know, and have some you know family members members there, and that she didn't really you know her intent was for not for her to die, um, and try and mitigate it in in some sense in regards to you know the harm. Um, but you know, it's it's a sad it's sad case. Um, no matter how you know how you look at it, and very compelling closing argument by the prosecution. Absolutely. Because when we come back, we're going to play you some moments from court from yesterday when her standby counsel wanted to jump in and start defending her and representing her. Did it work? We'll let you know right after this.